Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we're discussing why you're not as important as you think you are. Why you're not as important? Damn it, I am important. We'll see. But before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? We are drinking Le Freak. By the Green Flash Brewing Company in San Diego, California. Uh, and this is a – what's the ABV of this one, Madam Mistress? Almost enough. Almost enough. <laughs> 9.2. 9.2. Yes. The inside of the cap says share with friends, so I think we're off to a good start. I don't have any friends, so can I share with y'all? Hey. Sure. Why not? <laughs> I don't appreciate that, Mike, and I'm not sure that I can uh, – I can share with you. I almost poured that. Mike, I resemble that. You do resemble that remark. I almost poured this in my coffee. That would have been disastrous oh, we're, because we're drinking, this is not scotch. We're drinking both for sure now. Yes. Yes, yes absolutely. So I, I'm a... I'm oh, a, I guess you're right, John. I'm a little concerned because um, I, I have no idea what we're talking about. So uh, here's what we're discussing today. So. I studied very hard for this episode. Oh, you know. Well, I did kind of spring it on you guys, what, yesterday afternoon? I was pretty ready for Machiavelli, though. (laughs) So, essentially what we're going to be discussing here today is um, the concept of each of us feeling as though we are the main characters in our own lives. Um, Following that with a discussion of, I take it this beer's not great. That's fantastic. Thanks, Mike. Um, Coffee is wonderful. Following, thank you. Following that with... um, the idea that um, there is a phenomena, at the very least, whether that is problematic or helpful, of people um, feeling not only like they are the protagonists, but the heroes, um, both of their own lives and maybe of uh, society at large. That, um, that's absolutely true True in my case. Is it? Yeah, See? yeah I, I am everyone's hero. Yeah. And then... Where's my white horse? A discussion of how it is that we can perhaps... Um, find the most beneficial uh, means by which to adjust ourselves to. I, I've got to tell you now that, that you've got an uphill battle if you want to convince me that I need to adjust my, my, my beliefs. Uh, I'm just going to throw that out there now. Sounds good. Um, so, starting out, essentially, um, there is a, a very reasonable perception that um, in psychology is recognized that most people have, um, and that it is, in fact, a source of a large portion of the conflicts that we have with each other. And that is the idea that we are the main characters in our own lives, um, or rather the main character in, in everyone's life. In the story at large. Yeah. Reason for this being essentially that... Um, Imagine a movie. It's got a voiceover that's kind of telling the story. The voiceover that exists for each of us is in our own voice. Um, and then we also have the aspect that our the only time that, at which our story ends is when we die. Um, and so by necessity from that perspective, um, any other person who dies throughout the course of your story, since you are the main character, is necessarily not as important as Incidental. you are. Yeah. Um, it, you or are. You should develop the plot. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you are necessarily the most important one because you are the only one for whom, when you die, the story also ends. Well, the, the I'm glad short- somebody finally understands my life. The shortened version uh, of, of a much more nuanced phrase. Um, that everybody's heard is everything happens for a reason. What the people are really saying when they say that is everything happened for a reason that's relevant to my life. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think so. Uh, I, I just want to, I want, before we get any further, I want to throw in here that the voiceover in my head is James Earl Jones. Oh, yeah. Patrick Stewart. My, <laughs> and, uh, Patrick Stewart, for producer our producer. Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> Pee Wee Herman. Really? Okay. That's just because he masturbates in theaters. Jack Nicholson for me. Jack Nicholson. Yeah. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> It's me, because I'm the most important one in my life. Um, Apparently, James Earl Jones is the most important in <laughs> mine. There you go. Yes. Um, he's, he's, he's a sexy man. I, I mean, come on. Is it Darth Vader, James Earl Jones? Or? No, it's the voice of CNN. Okay. This is CNN. 
So I can't do a James Earl Jones impression. I'm not even going to try. So anyway. I would um, love to hear that, though. <laughs> what, me try? I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Maybe like, let me get a little more of this beer in me and we'll see. <laughs> you might not want it. I've had some of this beer. Okay. Um, so anyway, one of the things that actually catalyzed me wanting to do an episode on this um, was actually kind of a a niche area of this idea that we are the main characters or the protagonists in our own lives. Um, that being the white knight uh, phenomena. Um, so for anybody who's not familiar, white knighting is essentially, um, it is primarily heteronormative, but it doesn't have to be. Um, typically what it tends to be is a man who is, um, acting chivalrous with typically, um, less than chivalrous motives. Goals, motives yeah. yeah. Um, toward a woman. One of the things, one of the places that we see this the most these days is online. So, um, if you see, for instance, a, a woman online who has expressed an opinion and say some other guys have, or some guys have gone in and uh, criticized her for this, not saying who in here is right or wrong. Um, but what you often see is someone that would be characterized as the white knight coming in and defending her blanketly. Um, typically with responses like you can't treat women this way. Um, you shouldn't speak to women this way. They often, uh, promote themselves as being very egalitarian. Um, so, you know, they want women to be treated equal and yet also have an idea that women are a protected class um, who should only be spoken to with respect while in their minds it's perfectly fine for men to treat each other without respect. Um, so that was actually kind of the driving idea behind doing this episode. This is uh, going to be very uncomfortable for me, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> Why is that? I can relate very okay. strongly to this idea. Okay. Uh, well, and I think I, we've I actually really talked can. about that a few yeah. times on the show yeah. before. Yeah, I can, I can definitely relate to this, this position. Yeah. Um, but I think the, I think the key here is, um, running in to save somebody who doesn't necessarily, um, doesn't, hasn't asked you to save them, doesn't necessarily want you to save them, or really even need you to save them. So kind of like the U.S.'s foreign policy. Much like the U.S.'s yeah, okay. foreign policy. Okay. Um, now, one of the aspects that I kind of wanted to tackle this idea from is um, I think this is actually a symptom of this greater error, uh, I'm going to call it, feel free to disagree. Um, but what I perceive to be this greater error in our own perception of the importance of our own lives, um, because it, it appears to me as though the people who are engaging in this behavior believe that they are the sole person who can stop these injustices from happening. And, and you don't, uh, though it tends to be characterized as a man, uh, protecting some woman from some online aggression, um, you'll also see things like, um, people who maybe hear a rumor about someone doing some nefarious thing and, um, and they just go balls to the wall in trying to expose them. They, they view themselves as being the, uh, the sole bringer of justice in these cases, um, we see that a lot of times. We see it a lot with uh, conspiracy theorists. Um, politicians. Politicians a lot. Um, yeah, I'm reminded of a story when uh, when I ran for state rep back in 2004. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was on a, on a uh, I think I told the story before, but uh, I was on a platform with, uh, with then Governor Rick Perry. Mm -hmm. And he pulled me to the side and we were talking ahead of time, you know. And he said, uh, uh, I'll never forget it because he told me, he said, are you egotistical? And I thought, no, I'm not egotistical. And he said, you have to be. Mm -hmm. And he, and I'll never forget because he said, 
said to run for this position, if you want to be successful, you had to have looked around at the world and said, what these people really need is me. Is me, exactly. And I, 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 that, that struck me. And, I, mm-hmm. I, and, and I, I, that's exactly how I felt in 04. Yeah. That's how I still feel now. What y'all really <laughs> need is me. What y'all yeah. really need is me. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that that was at least partially a catalyst for this podcast yeah, was, yeah. you know what? You know what people need? <laughs> this this right here. They need this. They, they need, need this. They need, uh, they need me. <laughs> me so much, with side characters, not, John and not Anna. Not so much John. <laughs> <laughs> I was just the only one who actually knew how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and, John's the technological wizard. <laughs> and I had boobs and a voice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Still have boobs and a voice. I would, I would, Neither of those have gone away. I would still be sitting at pool, pool halls le- lecturing people. <laughs> yeah. uh, but anyway, um, I'm, I'm glad you bring up politicians, though, because we do see that a lot of times. Um, and, and I think that it has sprung from this whole idea in that um, so often whenever political campaigns are running, particularly ones for the highest office, um, that being president for anybody who's not aware, in uh, this country. In this country, yes. Um, and, and I'm going to go ahead and say I follow international politics some, not enough to be able to speak effectively on the culture there. The Pope's leader of the Catholic Church. What? Yeah, yeah. In case no. You're yeah. I thought it was you. That's the extent of my, my, <laughs> my international uh, knowledge at this point. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so, you know, it's it's not unusual – for us to see sentiments along the lines of like, if you don't elect me, this country will devolve into civil war, chaos, um, famine, any number of things. I mean, socialism, socialism. Well, what was that? Civil war, <laughs> chaos. <laughs> oh, uh, that's gonna. Uh, be, but I repeat myself. That's gonna be fun to <laughs> answer for later. Um, but anyway, so that that is something that we see a lot of these days. And I guess I want to jump in from here and see if, A, you guys um, are seeing these same sorts of um, patterns happening and what it is that you think um, is causing it. Do you see that as being the same source? Um, and if it is, do you see any sort of uh, remedy that we can have for that? Or is it just the way that things have to go based on uh, human ego? Yeah. Uh, I, I was thinking about this while you were talking earlier uh, with, with, with what I, I perceive. Now, again, we're bringing our own baggage. I perceive as a, as a very negative idea about the, about this, this, this white horse syndrome. Right. Uh, and to me, while, while there are some negative uh, aspects to it, it's not inherently a negative, right? Because I think without that drive, without that belief that that uh, you know I am the protect, I am the hero of my own story, you don't have leaders. You don't. No, nobody steps forward, mm-hmm. and, and nothing gets done. I think it's a it, it's part of the, the the human psyche and and a necessity for for the system to work for some people to have that that belief. Well, and I I actually kind of like that you hit on the necessity there because one of the things that occurred to me in looking at this that I don't think is apparent on the surface is that what these people seem to be um, what these people seem to be experiencing is they view a seriously negative situation but the fact that they are engaging in whether rightfully, wrongfully, wrongfully, effectively or not, um, they're entering into this situation is an example that they are still maintaining hope for resolving the situation. Um, and so I do begin to question whether hope or desperation. Well, desperation hadn't occurred to me. Yeah. How so? Well, I, I, I again, just this idea that, 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 Things have gotten so bad that we we have to have somebody on a white horse come in and rescue. I guess so uh, bad that we need a Batman. I, 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 well, or or we need a Hitler. I think about oh, ni- nineteen thirty three. You know uh, when Hitler came to power, he, I think he Hitler, was the White Knight. Hitler was the White Knight. Germany was in a, a massive economic depression. Things were terrible. Uh, the government wasn't working effectively, and they said, you know, Hitler said, I, "I'm the solution," and people huh. went, "He's the solution." 
uh, Joseph Stalin, uh, Franklin Roosevelt. Oh, there's hope there. Franklin Roosevelt, yeah. George Washington. I mean, we can go on both sides, of, but both right, extremes. Right, absolutely. But it's a time period when things are so bad that people are willing to, to grant power to that protagonist. So do you think that seeing a rise in white knighting behavior is an indication that things are getting so bad that people are desperate? I think seeing a rise in acceptance of the white knight behavior is. I think there's always going to be those people. I think there have always been Hitlers. Right. But you have to have the, you know, the math has to be right for that person to come to power. Uh, and, and sometimes I go back to, you know, we did the episode on, on revolutions, mm-hmm. Crane Britain's anatomy of a, re- of a revolution. Uh, in, and at the end of every, of every revolution, there's that, you know, you've got your white knight mm-hmm. your, that, that comes in, uh, and, and saves everything and eventually becomes, a dictator. Yeah. Uh, you know, you live uh, long enough to become the villain. Yeah. Yeah. A great, 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 uh, great quote there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I forgot who said that, but I think it was the Chir- Joker. I think it was Churchill originally. Wasn't no, it? I'm pretty sure it was the Joker. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure Churchill said it first. Really? I don't think he ever fought Batman. I <laughs> think you're confused. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, but, but I think there's, I think there's truth to that. Um, uh, uh, yeah. It's either Churchill, Franklin, or Mark Twain. Come on. Yes. Or the Joker. Yeah. Or the uh, Joker. But, uh, I, I I think that that in, in time I think that's always Harvey there. Dent, that which is 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 Batman, uh, yeah, Batman movies. That was a uh, Two, Two Face. Face, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a I'm a big comics geek. That's scary. Really, that wasn't ever said before that. <laughs> uh, keep talking, and I'll figure that's, that out. That's terrifying. That I I remember that as a historical quote, and it's from a fucking movie. <laughs> oh lord, uh, but uh. I, I do think that at times of incredible uh, crisis, those people rise to power. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was never said before that. It was never said before. Fuck it. I'm going to say that it was Churchill. I want everybody to, to spread that around. Uh, did Churchill fight Batman too? He did now. He did now. <laughs> um, okay. That, that's a good one. That, that is. Thoughts, John? Oh, so um, Sorry, you've been so you've been so quiet over there. I want to hear what it is that's cranking away in your brain. It, 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 oh, there's not much cranking it's there. John, I mean, he's, we know. He's but, thinking about boobs. He's cranking butts. something else. <laughs> the cooling system is very efficient. So. No, it's not. Um, no, I, I mean as as far as white knighting goes, uh, I think it it gets back to probably the show we did last time on uh, social media bubbles mm-hmm. and hearing a single viewpoint. And actually, your heroes are very much determined by social media bubbles. And I think that we have the largest and, and most pronounced bubble in our own head because we get to hear this constant voice of ourselves. The asshole. Yeah, the asshole. And not it, and sometimes us reassuring ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so why wouldn't we be the hero? We're the person we hear from the most, you yeah. know? Um, and do you think that's everybody, though? Or do you think that's no, a characteristic that... that- but just some people act on it. Yeah, some people act on it. Some people buy into it. Some people think they're, you know, maybe a piece of shit, but they're still the, the main person they hear, and that they still feel, you know, remorse for themselves largely. Um, you know, and I, I think, you know, you asked about solutions. Mm-hmm. I think the solutions are pretty obvious. We need more Vulcan mind melts. <laughs> oh, is that what it <laughs> is? Oh, it's clear. Okay. Fucking Star Trek. <laughs> Are you proud of me? Fucking I said Star Trek, you I did. Said Trek. I appreciated that. That was painful, by the way. <laughs> if you go listen to our old episodes and the few times that we referenced Star Trek, um, Mike's Houston ass says track. Yes, you yes, do. Yes, I do. I do. <laughs> I appreciate I also your evolution. Say Houston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate it. It's killing me, but I, I consciously ch- made that choice. I appreciate that a for lot. For our listeners. Yes. Um, who are wrong. <laughs> so <laughs> they're wrong about the H in Houston? Yes. <laughs> Houston. I think the people that live there get to pick how it's, it's like pronounced. like while. Well, I've been anyway, to Louisville, so. <laughs> Louisville. Nolans. Been Nolans. Nolans. Yeah. <laughs> Both of those cities, you say like you have a dick in your mouth. Or it's, some boudin. We're not, we're not judging, though. <laughs> no, yeah. nobody judges. Just don't put the boudin and the dick in your mouth at the same time. <laughs> Spicy. <laughs> You guys are going to kill me on air. This show is On air. Okay. Hey, will you save us? Because the show is going south quick. I'm working on it. So, um, I actually wanted to kind of approach this. And and I think it's going to be interesting now. Because I found what I believed to be um, the solution to the both the white knighting, um, but more widely the idea of us being the main character or is most it assisted Im- suicide? 
or most important character in in the overall story. I'm important if I can do my own. Thank you. <laughs> because I think assisted suicide may be the solution to some of this. Uh, so anyway, um, I I came into this thinking that I had found the solution to this. Although it seems, Mike, that you see some necessity to having I do. I do. Um, this sort of mindset. My solution being nihilism. Oh, God, I hate it whenever we get into nihilism. So it's nihilism. It, it's such bullshit. It's such bullshit. So um, I think we have seen numerous times. Um, and by we, you mean you and John? We as a society. Oh, okay. The important people, thank you. <laughs> have seen numerous. Get off your white horse. Have seen numerous times the uh, negative impact of these sorts of behaviors and these sorts of people. Sure, sure. Um, and this incredibly self-important idea that, in fact, take um, environmental degradation for an example. Um, you know, when you are looking at the use of our uh, resources as well, they are benefiting me, and I don't want to change my life, which is one of the biggest roadblocks that we have in yeah. in environmental protection. Absolutely. Is that people don't want to change their own way of life because they are the most important person. Tax codes. Exactly. Um, Tax codes are the same way. Yeah, ex exactly. And so um, what I began to wonder is if changing the mindset to make nihilism more widespread <laughs> wouldn't be the solution because in that mindset, Mike is pissed. Uh, in that mindset, you, you kind of check out of yourself. Reality? You check out of reality. Hey, you is this the part where we get to find the infinity oh, stones? Cause I'm ready God. to find the infinity stones. <laughs> God. So anyway, you, you kind of check out of this idea that you oh, are so self-important from the perspective that um, nothing matters. And, and I realize that is an incredibly simplistic version of nihilism. However, nothing matters. Nothing matters. If nothing matters, then why then everything the, matters? Then why the fuck would we protect the environment? If nothing matters, why would we uh, stop uh, stop genocides? If nothing matters, why why do we protect lives? That's my whole problem with nihilism. I think it's a cop out. It makes no fucking sense to me. Hashtag MCU Lives Matter. The the whole idea of of, of nihilism is is to me it's a it, it's a, a scholarly uh, experiment uh, where some people came up with with this idea. Oh, th this will be wonderful, and they never looked at the real world. See, and I disagree with that. Um, of course you do. You're a fucking dumbass when it comes to this particular topic. Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, so I don't think our listeners uh, don't worry, are, baby. are surprised by this. Oh. I'll protect you. <laughs> oh, God damn it. I don't need your Why protection. Why is John putting his armor on? <laughs> it's so shiny and there's a white horse over here. <laughs> I always wanted a horse. No. Um, so what was the That's quote, the John? It was, I'm the um, only one that actually has a white horse. To live is to suffer and to survive is to find some meaning in the suffering, right? I Perfect think you nature. made that up. What? I think you made that up. I, I hope not. It's tattooed on me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so uh, we 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 have a, a mutual acquaintance that has I our I fall to Pisces uh, tattooed on her back. So I mean, uh, wait, wait, really, a tattoo doesn't mean anything. That yes. is fantastic. It's supposed to say I, I fall, fall to pieces. pieces. Yeah, no, I got that. That is fantastic. I hope they get a fish tattooed next to it just to <laughs> run with it. I think they do, don't they? I don't know. Okay, um, but anyway, so the idea that nothing matters, I think, is the simplisticism. Whereas um, the more complex view of it looks at it and says that I don't matter, says that um, in the grand scheme of things, my contribution is meaningless. And I think from that perspective, Such a sad idea. But it's not a sad it's idea. It is a sad. freeing idea. It's a useless. It, 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 if I thought that that was the way the world works, I would just want to shoot myself because. Why the fuck should I be here if I don't matter? You know what? Why the fuck should you go away if you don't? 
you can have so much freedom God, if what no, if if the no, decisions no. that you make on a day to day basis don't impact the decision. overall story, I am gonna do then nothing. you can make whatever decisions you want to. And the decision so that you're going to make is to off yourself. It is so depressing <laughs> to think that you know. I don't matter. You don't matter. I might as well just go on a killing spree and then shoot myself. It's a fucking terrible philosophy. It's not, though. It's awful. It's horrible. Please, please I think, yes, you can take it to a negative. This idea. This I think idea you can take dumbass. it to a negative place. However. Oh, I think it's real easy to take it to a negative place. Well, so let me ask you this. Because, so, I mean, that's interesting because you said, you know, if you don't matter, why not go on a killing spree and see yourself? Is that just a way to try to make yourself that important person? I mean, it's so worth it to be the important person that it's yeah, worth Yeah, I guess if you I, kill I, I enough think, people, people you could be important. Yeah, I think people do. I know some people do. I, yeah, yeah. I don't disagree with and that. I think it's a response to that idea. Do you think idea? it's a reasoned response? Do you think it's a reasonable response? I think it's a reasoned response. I don't okay. think it's reasonable. Okay. If that makes okay. any sense. Yeah. I think you can logically get there. I think you can logically get a lot of places. So, are you saying that if we, by and large, adopted a nihilistic mindset, that there are people who would seek to be important enough to mean something, and we would still end up with this white knight phenomenon? No, I think there were people that would seek to seek to make a name for themselves by mass murdering lots of people. Uh, uh, so and, doing but, something but, 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 to mean but, but, enough. But, but maybe maybe the other way too. Maybe some people maybe it would balance. I don't know. But I think the I, I think the negatives of it far outweigh the positives. But again, I'm coming from a from a religious place while while you know, uh, I know John isn't isn't, and and Anna fluctuates between what she thinks on this stuff, or or kind of bounces around. But uh, from a religious perspective, I have to believe that there's a purpose out there uh, uh, in in order to 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 find meaning in my life. Okay. If I thought that there was no meaning, I I, I think I would, that would really tear me up. Now. Again, that's because I come from a place of religion to begin with. <laughs> well, and I was going to say, I, I think you're programmed. Uh, well, I think I, I, I we, we all are. Yeah. But I can't get past that in my mm-hmm. brain, uh, the, 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 the hopelessness of, of, of nihilism to me. It's, uh, it's something that every time we brought it up, I, I get a visceral reaction. I know. I almost get angry when I when I hear it. I know. You took uh, your headphones off. I, yeah, I did because I didn't want to hear you in my head anymore. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's not funny. <laughs> it is. I uh, th- there, there's 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 a few shows that that just really have gotten to me over the mm-hmm. years, and and the nihilism show. I remember when I left here, I was so fucking angry. Uh, the barter show. I wanted to kill John. Uh, was there a religious belief behind that? No, <laughs> no I just John. Was a prick. Uh, and, and I was very very drunk that night. Yeah. So he is uh, also a prick though, and he's also a prick. But uh, I, I'm finding myself. I didn't think that we were going this way with this topic. So mm-hmm. I'm finding myself in that position again, where all this is coming back on me, and it's so. It, I'm getting angry just talking about it. I'm sorry. That's okay. It's part of the show. <laughs> but uh, you, you know, it, it it it's hopeless to me, and I don't like the, the thought of hopelessness. To me, what drives me is hope. Is there a significant and I find difference? So much hope in it. It, and it, and again, you're it is baffling to me. Is there a uh, significant difference in the ideas? <laughs> Sorry, John. I should have thrown those the other way. <laughs> I, I, I say she's a dumbass. She throws shit at I know, you. Right? I love it. <laughs> is there a significant difference in the idea that none of us are important and the idea that we are all equally important? But that's not the idea that anybody has. That's not the one. They have idea. the idea that not. they I'm, are I'm, the most important. That's not the question I'm asking, no, though. I'm I asking. Think, I, no, there's not a significant difference. I think difference. there is a vast difference in belief but there's not a vast difference in outcome okay okay uh but but again i'm going back to this idea of 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 the white knight and 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 i think i'm inconsistent here because when we talked about the great man theory of history i was a great man guy Mm -hmm. i think that i think history is driven by great men Mm -hmm. that instead of men being driven by ideas i mean there's obviously some interplay but i think that if you're if, if you're of that belief you have to be of a belief in this this uh, white knight theory because isn't every great man a white knight? Yeah, yeah, you have to be. You, yeah, you have to be. And I think that that, that or a dark that, knight. I think no, that's Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, 
I think great accomplishments are made because of this white knight syndrome. See, and I think this idea that... Um, I think bad things happen, too. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's like Batman. Like Hitler, um, but Stalin, I, Mao. I we think, also get Washington and the Roosevelts. And I think this... And me. This... <laughs> I think I this just lost that argument with that last point, didn't I? We get we get a, a broad range of things, Mike. It's a broad range, you know, just places all over. But I I genuinely wonder if we don't over celebrate the successful white knights of history, and by that are not um, empowering idiots. <laughs> I think we should empower more idiots. She just said we should empower more idiots. No. This is the nihilist no. argument. Empower is, idiots. You, you may be one of the idiots I'm talking about here. Um, but I think... See if I send you any more dick pics. <laughs> that worked. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, I think that this this over celebration of that joke these successful got lost white audience. knights. Yeah, they, they didn't have all the context of the conversations before. They just think you sent her dick pics now. <laughs> Richard Nixon. Okay, Richard Nixon is what I sent her. Yes. Yes. Um God, I'm crying now. Okay. So I, I you think You were just gonna let that go and, yep. and not save me, weren't you? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> because fuck you. Um but no. I I, I, you right now. I I keep trying to finish this sentence and it just can't. Um but I think Typical this argument. celebration of um these white knights is actually empowering idiots to think that they can elevate themselves to this sort of this, like that sort of level. Uh some of them? Yeah. yeah. Some of them are, are 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 into that. And again, I don't I don't think it's a perfect system. But I think it's part of the nature of being human. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I, I, I think that whenever we try and, and change our nature, we have a problem. Well, and that's actually one of the things that I kind of wanted to. Do we want to talk about this beer before we talk about the nature of humans? Yeah, we can. I, I think we need to do anything to calm things down before I just fucking uh, forget my chivalry and knock the shit out of you. So you don't want to hear that I think this is possibly the best beer we've had on oh the show. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> uh, don't hey, wor- don't worry, first. I don't think that. You, you, no, you go first. You started. Oh well, okay. Let's Shit. talk about the beer. Um, <clears throat> what beer is it? Le Freak Le by Freak. Green Flash Brewing Company in San Diego, California. It is a nine point two California beer. And the fact that it is a nine point two ABV is the best thing about it. I love you again. Um. <laughs> John's going to love this beer, by the way. Well, I'm sorry, John. It, it is a 101 IBU, so it, it does make sense that John would like this more. However, interestingly, um, as high of an IBU as it is, I find the bitter taste in this beer to be clunky and unmanageable. Um, you Much can, like the U.S. government. Ah, that was good. <laughs> oh, they're friends again. Look, I'm putting off. my headphones back on now. Fuck off, John. <laughs> <laughs> We're bonding over hating yeah. you in this beer. <laughs> but anyway, but I do. I find the bitter in this beer to be clunky and unmanageable. Um, I've I've seen other beers with even higher IBUs that manage to have um, a nice ascension and decline of that that bitter profile um, and had some kind of other characteristics behind it. But a lot of what I'm tasting in this beer is just kick you in the face and knock your teeth out bitter. Pine needles. Yeah. And fuck yeah. pine needles. Yeah. So with that, um, I am actually going to give this beer a 1.7. 1. 1.7. 1. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. a fan. Yeah, very. So I would not buy this beer again. Uh, John, you or me, because I expect you're going to be high. Yeah, let's go with you. Me? All right. Um, I'll be honest. When I when I had the first sip of this, I thought it tasted like um, uh, like you're eating pine needles out of someone's ass. Uh, it, oh. It, yeah. Uh, I use the term pine needles a lot when I'm talking about about, about a hoppy beer because that, that, that's that's the, the 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 feel I get for it. And it's, it, it is it is incredibly hoppy, but it's not hoppy in a uh, 
in a typical like IPA kind of way. Yeah. It's hoppy. In it a, smells like an IPA. It smells like an IPA, but it doesn't taste like one. But it's got the it, it it it's got a flat bitterness to it. It's not a it's not that that full bitterness to me. Um, it's like it has no front notes and no back notes. There there is there is honestly very little that I like about this beer. Um, but I will I will give it one one bit of uh, of acceptance here that that the more I drink of it the more I like it. That's because of the nine point two. Well, I, I, it may be, but the first drink was terrible. But now I'm I'm going to finish this and I may have another glass of it. It's 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 drinkable. It's not it's not good to me. Um, I, I'm surprised that you said one point seven because uh, I I I had my honestly my initial rating was like a point eight. But as I've drank it, I'm going to go with a 1.8. I made my, my decision okay. up before you gave yours. Uh, Interesting. Which is 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 probably higher than I would give it for me. But trying to be fair, I, I think 1.8 yeah, is Yeah, if I am rating this, so this is an Imperial IPA. And if I'm rating this as an Imperial IPA, I think it misses the mark in a lot of places. I, I, I do too. I do too. Uh, but I, but I, think, I think there's an audience for it, so I'm not going to completely torpedo it. 1.8. No. So, this is a really interesting beer. And John's going to go with a seven. And, and, and they say at the beginning it's kind of a, a mashup. It's a Belgian-style Imperial India Pale Ale. Maybe that's what they did. They brewed this beer and said, oh, shit, we fucked something up here. This is a Let's Belgian- just throw some names on here and see what happens. This is a Belgian-style stout lager Imperial Pale Ale uh, Gosa. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, and, and when I when I initially mm. smelled it, it did, actually didn't have a really strong nose profile. And then taking the first drink, it was like razor blades of cinnamon running down my throat. Uh, it has a very sharp bitterness that lingers. And not even like cinnamon in the pleasant way, but like, no, like cinnamon raw, straight out of the yes. It's cinnamon. the burn of the cinnamon without the flavor of yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was actually... That was, that was good. Yeah. I couldn't uh, figure out how hey, to describe John did that. something good. Let's yeah. let that... High five. We're all we friends again. <laughs> um, I was actually really surprised for a nine point two. That they hit the alcohol really well. It, it's it's smooth yeah. in that aspect. I agree that there 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 there's a bell curve to it. Yeah, um, it really overpowers the Belgian. I like Belgian beers. If you try really hard and believe in yourself, you can detect the Belgian in there. But it's not your your kind of upfront. By, by Belgian, they mean that's the that's the immigrants that that brewed it. Maybe I don't know. Maybe so. But um, but it, it, it's it's kind of trying to do too much and not doing any of it well. Um, it, like you said, your your taste buds kind of adjust to the bitter. It goes from like cinnamon razor blades to just kind of chewing on a stick of cinnamon. Um, wow! But I'm surprised at this, John. But it uh, I know. it's it's not great. His taste is no longer in question. I am though going to rate a little higher than you guys. I'm giving a solid two. A solid two. Well, we're, we're all about the same area. I can forgive you for that. Yeah. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say one more thing that I didn't say with this. This is the ugliest fucking label I've ever mm. seen. Uh, Green, uh, Green Flash is not known for good labels. And, and, and I'm, I mean, I know our beer connoisseurs are out there going, don't, don't talk about the, the experience of the bottle. But that's oh. something with it, too. And and the, and the bottle experience is terrible. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. Real quick, would you drink it again? I mean, if I was at a party and that was what they had... Yeah, if someone handed this to me, I would take it graciously. Um, but only graciously. I would exactly. take it reluctantly. Yeah. Yeah. I would take it reluctantly. If I wouldn't someone, buy it again. If someone was like, here, I've got some beer for you and started pouring in my glass, I'd stop them early. Yeah. I yeah. can tell you that. That's good. I, 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 <laughs> oh, I just I've, need a taste. I've got oh, to drive next you. week. Oh, don't tell me beer fuck advocates you. got this. No, no fuck, fuck beer fuck advocate. You. Fuck they give it a nine. Four point oh two out of five. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a little horseshit. I think that that, that Lafreak has been been padding the numbers there somehow. Some but, maybe so. Uh, I want to see how but, uh, many ratings are on that. Hold on. I gotta see yeah, like two. How two many ratings? <laughs> two thousand four hundred and twenty nine ratings. And gave they, it, and they all work for Greenleaf Brewing Company. Yeah. And right. look, look, look at this distribution. I, they won't be able to see it on screen, but look. Wow. That is ungoddamn reasonable. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't. Let me see if I can do this. I don't know. No, nope. January. A producer is shaking his head that didn't com- come through on the video, but like it, it is very highly centered around the four. I don't. Guys, somebody guys. likes this beer. Yeah. Go out, guys. try it, see if you're one of them, and explain guys. it to me. Uh, hey, guys, those people need to quit 
they need to take up another hobby besides raiding All right. bears. Um, I don't know how we want to handle this. Um, we can typically rely on our uh, primary craft beer source for having fresh beer. However, I did just find on the bottle, this says best by January 27th of 2018. So we are so about it, seven months out of date yeah, for this beer. It, it, it may be skunky. Yeah. Okay. So and it's got a skunky flavor to it. It does. You know what? Let's do this. I'm leaving my rating right where it is. For now. Let's see if we can get a fresh a bottle. Fresh, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye out. We will, for the first time in the history of this show, repeat a beer on the show yeah. with a yeah. fresh bottle. I'm glad I checked that. Yeah. 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 Uh, I wanna, you want to be fair. We'll yeah. Be fair. Yeah. Let me see. Does this one Best Buy January? Oh, the nihilist wouldn't care. Yeah. So, so it we will. Matter. We will try again with a fresh bottle. And this doesn't matter in the scheme of everything. But as a as 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 a, a believer in the White Knight, I think we need to ride in and rescue this if we possibly can. So. Uh, oh, you, you are know, using that so uh, wrong. <laughs> I'm trying really hard. Clearly, here. I'm trying. Let's play our game real quick. Uh, what is our game, Madam Mistress? Fuck date lawnmower. Fuck date lawnmower. Who? I say. Let's start with fuck. Can we call it fucking lawnmower date? No, no. no am, fuck date lawnmower. I'm okay, all fine. for for, for fucking lawnmower dates. <laughs> I know you are. Um, I am not fucking the lawnmower though. A this this particular bottle for sure does not get you laid. In fact, she probably walks out mid date. Um, if if this bottle does we'll get see. you laid, she's easy. Real, <laughs> real easy. Desperate, maybe. <laughs> real desperate. And 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 you may have had to leave. 50 on the counter and she walked out afterwards. Uh, yeah, know, this know. particular we'll, bottle definitely does not. We'll try a fresh one and see what happens. Will, will 50 do it now? I don't know. I mean, uh, why are you asking me? I Ask John. John, will 50 do it Do it for you now? Will 50 do what? We'll get you, we'll, we'll get you late. Will you lay, lay 50 on the counter, counter to, to, get, to get sex? Can you do that? I mean, it depends on how much you got me to drink beforehand. <laughs> oh, all right. All right, date. Date. So actually, I'm going to go with a little bit different one on this. I think you need to bring a bottle of this on every single day. And I'm going to tell you why. The bottle is long and thin and has a great grip handle. And if some guy starts talking shit to your woman, you may need to white knight. You can grab this. You can knock him over the head with Just it. Just don't drink it. Do not drink it. <laughs> don't, but keep the bottle around as a... As you know, a one of the things it could be used for a date is you could give them a drink of this, and, and if they immediately like it, you could just leave the date early. You know and their save taste money. is terrible. You could leave the date early and save some money. Yeah. You could excuse. I've got to go to the restroom and just never come back. Yeah. You keep this, but you keep this. <laughs> I have um, a gift for you. It uh, is not the gift of my presence, but this beer instead. All right, so, uh, lawnmower beer. Uh, I think this bit this beer is best served under the lawnmower while 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 mowing. Um, it is it is not a beer that I would I, I would I would drink while while mowing the lawn at all. It's 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 too bitter. Uh, yeah not good it's not a summer beer to me uh also that so uh so, which so, to be a lawnmower beer is to be a summer beer it's to be a summer beer yeah, yeah. that's right that's right yeah uh, it's right. amazing that this this whole thing started as me talking about lawnmower beers and now we've added all this stuff i know not a cosby beer uh, thank goodness not a weinstein beer it, it is actually abv wise close to being yeah, it's a cosby cl- close to being a cosby but beer you, like you got to be careful you don't cross the line i don't think it's a cosby beer because i don't think you get anybody to drink enough of it that's true well I, with these particularly we'll try to find some fresh and see what's up yeah, yeah. but what's this other bottle same date same, actually yeah. well, interesting yeah all right so um so back to nature our and humanity show yes Back to uh, shit. I wish I could remember where headphones we back off. Headphones back off. I wish I could remember where we left off. There, I, y'all you were, were yelling at each other off. about nihilism. <laughs> That's every show. It's, 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 lately, yeah, two thirds of our shows. Human well, our like, producers, yeah, no, I remember that part. Human <laughs> Thanks, so do Alex. You, do you think? Do you, honestly, do oh, you? I remember. Go ahead. Okay, no, 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 no. Okay, no, fine. You're there. I was trying to rescue you. I appreciate because that. Because I'm on my horse. I hope that whenever John puts this video out, he like washes you out so that you're as white as possible. You put a <laughs> Just helmet for on that me. moment. A okay, white we'll sheet, see. maybe. We'll see what happens. Anyway. Um, so, nature of human existence. I actually wonder if you might not be correct. Um, shocker. I know. I, I am. Well, we'll Just see. Just assume. We'll see. Um, in that... This attitude is necessary to human existence for the very fact that I don't know that we can ever, in large part, get outside of this idea 
that we are the main character in the overall story. Um, simply because the story is being told in our voiceover, in our voice. Um, I mean, every single one of our listeners right now, though they are listening to us for the moment, um, any commentary that they have is coming across as their voiceover in their own heads. Um, as they drive to work to their very important job. And you know what it's saying? It's These saying, guys are idiots. It's saying Mike is right. It's never and said those that before. other two people are dumbasses. It's never said that before. You know, from, from the responses we've gotten on our Facebook stuff and our, our, our emails and stuff. Don't that's, say it. That, Please that, don't that, say it. No, that's true. It's never happened before. <laughs> everybody comes down on y'all's side. I'm the asshole that everybody hates. Uh, Nobody comes down on my side. They all come down on John's yeah, side, yeah. which is the thing I didn't want to say, and I just <laughs> I just did it. Cut that out. Are you it, telling it, me in the future to cut that out? That's always I'm telling true. you in the future, see if you'll be cooperative, and I'm telling our audience just in case you don't. That's always just true. You know, I, I've mentioned it before, but 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 I have a student that we, we, we all yeah. know by name uh, that, that, that listens to our show regularly. That that I I fully believe hero worships John I, and I teach him and it pisses me off. I tell him all the time, "What, what are you doing? We've got to talk, son. This is wrong." Yeah. So I actually found a really interesting thing. Whenever I was uh, doing some research on uh, on this whole um, main character protagonist in our own lives, one of the uh, pieces that I found on it actually said. That, um, class, um, I'm just going to read directly from this. It's very short. Don't worry. So classrooms are often, no, 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 no. Uh, many people approach each situation like an actor who reads a script only to count the number of lines he has and how long they are. Uh, classrooms are often more fun for the teacher than for the students for this reason. A teacher who recognizes that each student is on his or her own path allows the non-disordered students to play a minor character in the classroom without having to act as if their whole life is unimportant. I agree with that. Oh, I thought it was very cool. I do. I agree with that completely. Yeah. Uh, well, and I think that's... Uh, I don't know what that has to do with our topic, but I agree I with it. I think that's actually illustrative of how it is that we have to engage with other people in society... Um, illustrative. who illustrative, illustrative, it illustrative. doesn't, it's both ways. Actually, I don't know. That was bothering me. It's both because, ways. because I say one, but I think I say it wrong. Go ahead. It goes both ways. Okay. I'm not going to, so anyway, do anyway. We, do we know, do we know anything else that goes both ways? Not a thing. Donald Trump, Donald Trump, both parties. Double ended dildos. <laughs> Double ended dildos, which you can own six of in Texas. Yes. No, 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 no. If they're double-ended, you can only own three. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that how it works? I actually don't know. <laughs> what if you cut them in half? Does that then, then you can definitely only no, the, own three, the, six the, halves. No, the, none of them are dildos. They're just paperweights. And you can have as many of them as you want. <laughs> well, it depends on which half you cut them in. And how long they are when you cut them because it could okay. be very... Okay, so moving on. Um, I we think that whole, is... We should do a whole show on dildos. <laughs> we did a whole convention on dildos. <laughs> <laughs> um, not on them. We actually, them. I think we did a show on the sex, on, on the laws. We didn't the actually. We didn't? No, but we should. That'd we should. be fun. So anyway. Hard shot, maybe. Um, I do actually think that is illustrative of how it is. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, of how it is. Mike is shuddering when I say words correctly. Yeah, I think um, I, I actually do believe you say it correctly and it drives me crazy. It's uh, illustrative in my mind. How it is that we have to. Um, interact with other human beings in a in an environment where we do all think that we are the most important one in the room. Um, that's all. All right, guys. Well, this has been Six Flags Philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have any thoughts on that? No. No, I mean, I, I, I'm busy looking up illustrative. Well, I, oh God, really, Mike? I think it's something that we've grown up with so much that that it's almost second nature. I mean, yeah. you know, I, th I think we're having a, a, a really deep discussion. Oh. Fuck, you're right. <laughs> I'm right. Uh. I think we're having a really deep discussion on, on something really um, inherently... Uh, well, I mean, we do that all the time. We did that with the fucking immortality episode. Yeah. I mean, but that's fine. But I guess what I'm saying here is, you, your 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 last line kind of tried to 
to me have a discussion on how we should behave. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's kind of like having a discussion on how we should behave in a world where gravity exists. And it's like, well, yeah, we kind of already figured that out. Though. I mean, we do, but, 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 but the, I wonder if there's not a better way for us to operate. Well, well I, I, think, I think to get to there, let's talk about this. Do you think this is something that is inherent or is it a learned behavior? No, I think it's evolutionary. Evolutionary. Explain. Well, I, I think people who engage in this behavior uh, tend to... My genes are the most important, so I should pass them on. Oh, and they tend to point. breed, and then, you know, um, they tend to fight harder because if I have these really important genes, I should pass them on. And I'm going to pour a little more of this just because we opened both bottles. Yeah, so. I'm not. Oops. I'll, I'll let you take on that. that I, I only poured a little bit. I just don't yeah. want to waste all that. But yeah, so I mean, I think there's a definite evolutionary component that plays into your whether or not you survive as a as a lineage. So well, inherent, and, inherent. Basically. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's actually interesting because uh, to throw Mike a bone for a moment. I appreciate that. Um, one of the things that we've actually discussed in the past, um, I believe in, in some private discussions on nihilism, has been the idea that um, if you don't matter, if um, your participation, your contribution in the grand scheme of things is minuscule at best, why procreate? That's right. Um, and so if there are people who because have that fun. mindset... Well, that is also true. <laughs> that is true. Most of those people are procreating by accident. Um, <laughs> that's where all the oops babies come from. <laughs> but, oops, I did it again. <laughs> that was good. I'm clipping that. Yes. Oh, please. But anyway, um, so if it is that the people who think they are so important that they're existence contributes significantly to the overall story, they're going to be more likely to procreate because otherwise the society won't exist That's in a right. perfect state without them. Whereas the people who think that they are so un- unimportant are probably less prone to procreating on purpose. Wouldn't you? So, if, yeah, if, I, could, if, I could see it being. Isn't that basically the justification for the, uh, the intermarrying in royal families? Yeah. What's that? Yeah, I think so. The fact that, 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 you know, we are somehow the white knight, the the right people, and, and we, we were ordained. We were ordained to lead, and uh, uh, white knighting equals incest. Yeah, you're right. Well, it can I think? I don't think it has to, but no, uh, I think it does. Please, <laughs> Thanks, <I laughs> me and my that. cousin are the most important people on this planet. <laughs> we should have sex. Humans and, who think <laughs> that they matter equal incest. <laughs> Human lives matter. Uh, but uh or don't I I, I just I, I think you're I think you're you're right to the extent that it's evolutionary. I think it's inherent. I think it's I also think it's necessary. I think it's something that that makes the society work. Um uh, I also think it's dangerous. Mm-hmm. But well, I, don't, the, I don't think I don't think existence can, is dangerous. I don't think that 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 necessarily you know you have to be one or the other. Uh, if it, you look back at the Philestrians, they didn't believe that. At the what? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, see, I knew he wanted me to ask oh, that, or Lord. wanted one of us to ask that question, so I shut my mouth. I was getting ready to hammer him, going, what the fuck? I thought he was trying to say Philistines. I didn't know what he yeah. was doing. The yeah. Philestrians. Yeah. Uh, those poor Philestrians. Uh, yeah. But, but, but honestly, uh, I think it's something that, that, that's inherent in us. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. But I do think there is a bit of a learned behavior, because I can remember uh, as, a, as, as a child, I was taught, I was consciously taught <laughs> to be very chivalrous. Mm-hmm. Uh, my grandfather would stand up when my grandmother walked in the room and she came to the table. He would stand up and let her sit down and, and sit back down. And to this day, I, I run up there and I get the doors for ladies because I think my grandfather will rise out of the grave and kick my <laughs> ass if I don't. Uh, so that's a taught thing. Yeah. But, but, but I think that's part of the white knight thing. That's part of the, that idea. I think chivalry is part of that. Uh, or can be. I don't think it has to be. Yeah, I don't think it has to be because the thing about it is I, and this is completely anecdotal, so I'll, I'll recognize that, but I feel like I've experienced a number of men who behaved chivalrously, who did not behave like white knights, who had every faith that if I needed saving, I would tell them. Um, okay, now here, here's my issue. I, I wonder if we're looking at things in a different way. 
Possibly. Because uh, my parents divorced when I was three. I mm-hmm. was raised by my mother. And uh, I, th- there is nothing in me that believes that women can't do. Right. I, I, my mother's a badass mm-hmm. to this day. Uh, she, she is a badass. Uh, tougher than I'll, I'll ever be. But that having been said, I'm still gonna, going to respect her. I'm still going to open doors for her. To me, it's not a, it, it, it's not a, it's not a sexist thing. It's a, you know, it, it, it's a duty thing. Well, and one of the things. That Almost you, deontological. Yeah. Well, and one of the things that, that, um, one of the complaints you see a lot, um, with regard to the kind of, the white knighting that you see, particularly online, is, um, is you'll see the person that they're defending saying, like, Back the fuck off! It's not that big a deal, That's an and asshole, they still though. go after That's it. That's an asshole. Um, and they still go after it in the name of the person that is yeah, yeah. saying that they don't need that defending. Okay. Uh, um, I, and I think that's wrong. I think mm-hmm. I, I, I think whenever you take it, I think anything that is that is unwanted or unwarranted is is wrong. <laughs> so uh, I would be against that. Right. I don't have anything. Oh, I thought your oh, hand you're like, I was just, I he's was just, twitching, that's yeah. all. Yeah. All right, all right. No. I thought you had something no. super important to say there. No, no, I but, mean, but I, I, I should have looked across the counter and saw that dumb look on your face and yeah. known it. Yeah, Damn. no, I mean, well, I mean, that's the face mama gave me. But, uh, but no, I, I tend to agree with you. I, I think there is a I difference. I blame your mother for that. <laughs> well, she tried to abort, but it was three months too late. So. Mostly because I've seen your father. Um, yeah, I was three months too late. <laughs> Well, this has been a lot of fun. Now that I've insulted, I've insulted you personally and and and, and your parents, my um, mother specifically, and yeah. your father specifically. Oh, okay, okay. I, yes. I, yeah. I defended your mother because I'm a white knight and chivalrous. Oh uh, there you go. Your father's a prick, though. So you know, uh, his father is nice. I, just leave me alone. You're right. I like his dad too. <laughs> oh I'm just yeah. Being a dick. <laughs> uh, What's new? So anyway, new thank you guys so much for tuning in. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> uh, we hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, because we certainly have. If you would like to support the show, you can find us on patreon.com slash six pack philosophy. If you want to buy some six pack philosophy swag, you can do so at teespring.com search six pack philosophy. Cause I'm not going to give you the URL here because it's a fuck. It's a fuster cluck. How it's a fuster cluck. <laughs> on Patreon, they can support us. For $500, yes. you can sleep with the host. So, uh, I will nap with anyone for $500. I'll, I'll have nap sex with anyone with you. for $100, honestly. Um, but anyway. Uh, I'll give otherwise, you a reach around for five hundred bucks. Otherwise, um, you hit up our website, find all sorts of fun extras there. We're adding more infrequently, not every day. <laughs> but you can also Go join our, our newsletter and get hopefully more um, frequent newsletters because I have not been the best at John publishing is getting them. Very, very, very impatient there. And I'm going to see how long I can drag this out before John actually gets to clink those glasses. That's not true. I'm going to go ahead yeah, and wrap this up because this has been a long baby. show and Mike is singing now and I've plugged everything there is to plug. And John is anxious and I have to pee. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. We've enjoyed it and we hope you have too. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. 